Today, we're diving deep into one of the most complex and controversial organizations in the Middle East, Hamas. Born out of conflict, fueled by ideology, and operating in the shadows, Hamas has been both a political player and a paramilitary force. We'll explore its origins, its evolution, and the intricacies of its operations. This is a story of ideology and ambition, of violence and resistance, of hope and despair. Understanding Hamas is crucial to understanding the complexities of the Middle East. The story of Hamas is inextricably linked to the Palestinian struggle for statehood. Formed during the First Intifada, a period of intense Palestinian uprising against Israeli occupation, Hamas emerged from the grassroots. Founded in 1987, Hamas, an acronym for the Islamic Resistance Movement, offered more than just resistance. It presented an alternative, a path rooted in Islamism. Its charter called for the liberation of Palestine and the establishment of an Islamic state. This vision resonated with many Palestinians, exhausted by years of occupation and disillusioned with existing leadership. Hamas quickly gained traction, establishing social institutions, providing aid, and filling the void left by a faltering political system. The First Intifada, while largely characterized by civil disobedience, was also a crucible of violence. Hamas, committed to armed struggle, embraced this violence, carrying out attacks against Israeli targets. The year 2006 marked a turning point for Hamas and the Palestinian territories. Winning a surprise victory, Hamas was thrust onto the center stage of power. The international community responded with sanctions and isolation. Internally, tensions with Fatah escalated into conflict. By 2007, Hamas had seized control of Gaza. Since then, Hamas has governed Gaza, grappling with immense challenges. They faced criticism for their authoritarian tactics and armed struggle. Despite challenges, Hamas remains a potent force, maintaining power through ideology, social services, and military strength. From its inception, Hamas has embraced armed struggle as a core tenet of its ideology. The Izzad Din al Qassam brigades, their military wing, have grown into a formidable fighting force, adept at waging asymmetric warfare against a vastly superior Israeli military. Rockets, often rudimentary in design but devastating in impact, have rained down on Israeli cities and towns. Tunnels, dug deep beneath the Gaza Strip, have served as both a defensive measure and an offensive tool. Suicide bombings, a tactic that has drawn international condemnation, have also been deployed, inflicting heavy casualties. Hamas exists in a liminal space on the world stage, condemned by some as a terrorist organization, embraced by others as a legitimate resistance movement. Their designation as a terrorist entity by the United States, the European Union, and Israel has severely restricted their diplomatic engagement and choked their access to international aid. Yet, Hamas has cultivated relationships with key regional actors. Iran, a staunch opponent of Israel, has emerged as a critical benefactor providing financial aid, military training, and technological support. Turkey, while officially recognizing Israel, has maintained contact with Hamas, offering a degree of political legitimacy. Hamas has skillfully navigated this landscape, leveraging its position to secure resources and advance its agenda. We'll dissect the debate surrounding their designation as a terrorist organization and the implications for peace in the region. Behind the rhetoric and the rockets lies a complex financial network that keeps Hamas afloat. Iran, as their primary benefactor, provides a significant portion of their funding, channeling resources through a labyrinthine network of intermediaries and front companies. These funds are used to purchase weapons, maintain their social service infrastructure, and pay their fighters. Donations from individuals and charitable organizations sympathetic to their cause provide a steady stream of revenue. These contributions, often routed through charities operating in the Middle East and Europe, are difficult to track and regulate. Within the Gaza Strip, Hamas has developed its own revenue streams, levying taxes on goods and services, controlling smuggling routes, and engaging in illicit activities. These internal sources of income, while controversial, provide a degree of financial independence from external actors. 
The history of Hamas is punctuated by cycles of violence, periods of intense conflict, followed by fragile ceasefires. These conflicts, often triggered by targeted assassinations, rocket attacks, or incursions into Israeli territory, have exacted a heavy toll on both sides. Major operations like Cast Lead, Pillar of Defense, and Protective Edge have left Gaza in ruins and claimed the lives of thousands. The Israeli Defense Forces, equipped with advanced weaponry, have inflicted heavy losses on Hamas, degrading their infrastructure and depleting their arsenal. Despite these setbacks, Hamas has emerged from each conflict with its grip on power intact and its capacity for resistance largely undiminished. Hamas shrouds its internal workings in secrecy, making it challenging to discern its leadership structure. The organization operates on multiple levels, with a political wing for governance and a military wing for attacks. Ismail Haniyeh leads the political bureau, aiming to soften Hamas's image. His authority over the military wing remains unclear. Yahya Sinwar, a hardliner, leads the military wing with autonomy. This diffusion of power and secrecy complicates understanding their decision-making. Discerning Hamas's long-term objectives has always been a challenge for analysts and policymakers alike. Their founding charter, steeped in anti-Israel rhetoric and a call for an Islamic state, has served as a lightning rod for criticism and a barrier to meaningful negotiations. In recent years, however, there have been subtle shifts in Hamas's rhetoric. A 2017 policy document suggested a willingness to accept a Palestinian state within the pre-1967 borders, a significant departure from their previous stance. Some argue that this shift reflects a genuine evolution in Hamas's thinking, a pragmatic recognition of the realities on the ground and the need for a negotiated settlement. Understanding whether their recent pronouncements represent a genuine shift in ideology or a strategic ploy is essential for assessing the prospects for peace in the region. While the broad strokes of Hamas's funding sources are known, the intricate details of their financial networks remain shrouded in secrecy. Intelligence agencies and financial investigators have long sought to penetrate the layers of Hamas's financial infrastructure, tracing the flow of funds from state sponsors like Iran through a complex web of charities, businesses, and individuals. Cracking down on these networks, often operating under the guise of legitimate activities, is a constant challenge. Private donations, often originating from individuals and organizations sympathetic to the Palestinian cause, add another layer of complexity. The illicit economy, thriving in the shadows of conflict, also plays a role in Hamas's finances. Unraveling the intricacies of Hamas's financial empire is a daunting task requiring a concerted international effort to disrupt their funding streams and curtail their ability to finance their operations. Hamas operates within a complex and often fractious Palestinian political landscape, navigating a web of rivalries, alliances, and shifting power dynamics. Their relationship with Fatah, the dominant faction in the West Bank, has been particularly fraught, marked by periods of cooperation, intense rivalry, and violent conflict. The 2006 legislative elections, which saw Hamas emerge victorious, exposed the deep divisions within Palestinian society and set the stage for a bitter power struggle. The subsequent takeover of Gaza by Hamas in 2007 solidified the split, leaving the Palestinian territories geographically and politically divided. Despite numerous attempts at reconciliation, brokered by regional actors like Egypt and Qatar, the rift between Hamas and Fatah persists. This division weakens the Palestinian cause, undermines their bargaining position in negotiations with Israel, and hinders efforts to establish a unified Palestinian state. As we've seen, Hamas is a multifaceted organization driven by a complex ideology and operating within a volatile region. Understanding their origins, their evolution, and their methods is essential for anyone seeking to grasp the intricacies of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. While much is known about Hamas, significant uncertainties remain. The true nature of their leadership structure, their long-term goals, and the full extent of their financial networks remain shrouded in secrecy. The story of Hamas is a cautionary tale, a reminder of the enduring power of ideology 
the devastating consequences of conflict, and the urgent need for a just and lasting peace in the region.